Well then, after the general test of the RTX 5070 CR and the MSI Ventus model, today we are going to focus on another RTX 5070 STI from MSI from the range just above the gaming trio, Dolce A OC. So let's see how it performs uh, right after the little sponsor segment. Here we go. So a small change that isn't really one for the channel's sponsor. You probably know Godil24, which has been supporting the channel for almost two years now. We are now switching to KissFan, which is another site from the same company, but it's exactly the same thing. So we find the classics as well as the same promo codes and discounts with the keys. Windows 10 Pro for less than $9 and Windows 11 Pro keys for less than $14 with the channel code VCG50. And for Office Keys or Windows Plus Office Packs, you get a 62% discount with the code VCG62. Regarding payment, the process is explained at the bottom of the offer page, which will allow you to choose your payment method by card or PayPal. And when receiving where the keys are sent by email with instructions on how to use them, don't forget to check that the email isn't not in your spam folder, just in case. If you encounter any problems, do not hesitate to contact customer service, which is available seven days a week and 24 hours a day, and they will assist you as quickly as possible. All the links are in the video description and as usual, thank you if you purchase a key because it allows you to support the channel which largely survives thanks to this partnership while also getting something in return. So a big thank you to you for your support and to KissFan who is sponsoring this video. So it's important to clarify right away, today's video is not a general review of the 5070 if that's what you're looking for, I invite you to check out the video released yesterday, which will be at the top of the video description. By the way, at the time my review of the 5070 appeared yesterday, YouTube had a glitch with the title, I don't know why. But anyway, it corrected itself. So today, we're focusing on the MSI Gaming Trio model in particular to see how it performs in terms of noise, temperatures, bah, overclocking and so on. So, we're quite familiar with MSI's gaming range, but well, since back in the day, even with the GTX 900 series, the 970 Gaming OC was very successful, with a rather nice overclocking potential at the time, while being quiet. And even, I would say, if the Supreme range has somewhat become the very high end at MSI, the gaming range often offers very good performance as well. I also had the opportunity to test the 4910 Super Slim last year, which was of rather good quality as well. No idea, by the way, if MSI plans to release a new slim range for the RTX 50, we'll see over time. But well, it's true that with the Sami her STI Ventus from yesterday, which was quite disappointing in terms of noise, particularly, I was quite curious to see what the gaming trio had to offer. So physically speaking, it's already a little bit larger than the Ventus. We're almost at 34 centimeters in length, 14 in width. However, it remains at a 2.5 slot thickness. So even if it's not a brick, you'll still need to be careful about its length, particularly to ensure it fits well in your case. And naturally, if the card is larger, its heatsink is also larger compared to the Ventus, and the fans are also wider as we gain about a centimeter in diameter, going roughly from 8.5 to 9.5 compared to the Ventus. On the trio here, the card is also heavier, 1.3 kilos for the gaming trio, whereas the Ventus weighed 1.1 kilos in terms of appearance. So it's more gamer oriented than the Ventus. Well, no surprise here, we're not caught off guard. It's written in big letters on the box at the same time. So yes, it's a gaming-oriented card. And we find an RGB strip on the front of the card that extends a little onto the edge. And this is covered by a shroud which makes the lighting a bit dull, I think. Personally, I would have preferred it to be a bit more flashy. If you're going to have RGB, it might as well be clearly visible. Speaking of the edge, a good aesthetic point here compared to the Ventus, because here, there are no visible cables. That's always nice. The backplate is metal with a flow-through design. It's always a shame that the barcode label isn't placed on the edge at the bottom of the card, as other brands do. Also note that the MSI Computer SRL label will not be present on retail cards. It's just a tag from MSI France for their loaner card. Otherwise, the GeForce RTX inscription isn't homage, it's particularly shocking. And where the MSI Dragon was a small inscription on the back of the chip for the Ventus we saw yesterday here, we find the Dragon at the flow-through level, and I find it quite nice with a shiny effect. A bit like your Panini Dragon Ball or Pokemon cards from back in the day, depending on how old you are. We also note a switch for the dual BIOS, which is located at the top edge and will probably be partially hidden by your power cable. But it's true that it slightly spoils the overall look on the backplate with a notch that's a bit too pronounced for my taste. Overall, well, the card has its style and it's clearly in line with other designs from MSI. 
After all, tastes and colors are subjective, so it's up to you to decide if you like it or not. As for the power connector, it's the 12V2X6, which normally shouldn't pose any particular problem for this type of card. Here, since we're dealing with a TGP of 300W, the cable is supposed to handle up to 600W. For this type of card, we normally have a more than sufficient safety margin. And in terms of video outputs, we find the Classic 3 DisplayPort 2.1B on Chimage and one HDMI 2.1B also in the bundle. Now we have a 12V2 while 6 adapter with three 3YZ8 pin branches. It's the same type of adapter that we found on the RTX 4000 in general, so less flexible and longer than those we saw with the RTX 5080 and 5090 Founders Edition. However, the connector tip here is yellow, whereas on the Ventus, it was the usual black. The yellow color found here ensures that it is properly connected. Basically, if you still see yellow when your connector is plugged in, it means it is not properly engaged. And we also find a small lipstick type stand with a magnetic base in the box. It's the same as the one for yesterday's Ventus, and that's pretty cool because it saves you from having to buy one. So physically speaking, not much to complain about. Let's see how it performs in terms of noise and temperatures. Now, so where it was quite problematic in terms of noise for the Ventus for the gaming trio, as we can see here, it's very, very good. 41.4 dBA in silent BIOS, 41.7 in gaming BIOS. It's very quiet for both BIOS settings, actually. And in terms of in-game frequency, well, I didn't notice any particular difference at stock on Kingdom. Deliverance 2, it was roughly the same frequencies for both BIOS settings. And in terms of temperature in silent mode, we were at 64 degrees and 62 in gaming BIOS for the core and for the VRAM. Here too, it hovers around 65 degrees for both modes. So in reality, apart from running the fans a little faster by 100 to 200 RPM, I didn't see any difference between the two BIOS settings, so we left it in silent mode. No coil wine noted during the tests, even though it doesn't guarantee that your card won't have it, since coil wine always has a random aspect. So, from a general performance perspective, the card is well cooled, rather quiet, not much to criticize, it's a good job from MSI here. In terms of frequency, the GPU on average across my panel of 16 games is at 2736 menohertz for the trio, whereas the Ventus OC was at 2780 and 2680. Don't ask me why. There is such a difference. One, I absolutely don't know. Maybe. It's the silicon lottery in terms of boost, but well. In any case, the factory overclock is often quite insignificant, and you can also manually increase the frequencies. I also ran the gaming trio through my panel of 16 games in 4K. In Rasta, I'll scroll through the slides for you, and well, as you can see, it might surprise you. But they are indeed 25070 Ti with almost identical performance as a result. Who could have predicted this result? We wonder. But well, the gaming trio often had a point or two better on the 1%, so it also translates to the average in the end. But well, aside from anomalies and a model that would be, for example, very, very poorly cooled, well, a 5070 Ti is a 5070 Ti. In terms of performance, it will almost never change anything in terms of overclocking potential. However, the gaming trio can handle a bit more GPU frequency than the Ventus. Is this also the silicon lottery? Is it thanks to the 10% power limit? Moreover, the Ventus couldn't do it since it was locked at 100%. No idea, in any case. In overclocking, the Trio gained 50 MHz more on the core compared to the Ventus, which allowed it to achieve a few more FPS than the Ventus. But here too, it's quite insignificant. In reality, we're at 9.38% more than stock for the Trio, whereas the Ventus was at 866 Compared to the stock frequencies, clearly it will make almost no difference in use. Despite everything, Ben, it's a second 5070 Ti cow that handles at least 8% more performance without too much trouble, which isn't too bad, and it's a bit more promising, I would say, than what we were used to seeing on the RTX 4000. So just like with the 5080, I think there's a little overclocking potential on the RTX 5070 Ti as well. However, in terms of power consumption, the trio was slightly above the Ventus, with an average consumption of 293W in 4K, while the Ventus topped at 285W. Well, not a huge difference once again, we agree, so the 5070 Ti Gaming Trio is rather good material. It's quiet, well-cooled, and performs well compared to the noise of the 5070 Ti Ventus. It's a bit like night and day. It's quite astonishing, actually. I understand that brands want to sell uh, their more expensive models to make more money, and that the MSRP model shouldn't be too attractive, but I think there was a way to make a slightly less aggressive fan curve on the Ventus, which would have made it less noisy by default. But well... As for the gaming trio, if it doesn't end up being too expensive, it's a very good model. Custom. But if MSRP models 
uh, better tuned than the Ventus are in stock for cheaper, like cards such as the Trio, for example, there is still no great reason to spend more money unless you're looking for a particular look, since as we've seen in terms of performance, it doesn't change anything at all. So, as always, do your research on custom cards to find the best models at the best price. I don't know the supposed price of this Trio model, but there's little doubt that it is, unfortunately, far too expensive during the launch period. Maybe in a few months it will return to a more reasonable price, let's say. And then otherwise, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this little test of the custom model. I don't often have the opportunity to do them, and it's a shame because it helps buyers to see a little bit how the different models behave. So we'll see if I manage to get other custom models to test. Otherwise, as usual, the PNWT will be stuff to support the channel if you enjoyed the video. The channel's Amazon page for ideas on typical configurations, the current graphics cards. When there are any... A big shout out to the members, Kofi and YouTube supporters of the channel who contribute to its survival, which really needs it. And then, otherwise, sending you kisses. We'll meet again very soon. For more videos, see you next time. Bye.